Start this machine. All right, we're good. We are in Megillat Rut in chapter 4. Um, Pasuk Chet, verse 8. Um, today, the truth is that today is a special day, and uh, it's a day that uh, yes. we say Gut Yontif. Gut Yontif, that's right. Gut it's, uh, it's, uh, today is the Rosh Hashanah for Hasidut. Yutas Kislev and Chov Kislev, those are two days. Two days Rosh Hashanah, we have two days Rosh Hashanah for Chasidus. And um, what this happened, is, but we what said, happened on these days? What happened? We, we, we said... Uh, we, you said Tachman. We said Tachman. Yeah. <laughs> so what but happened... Hey, did you go to the big breakfast this morning? Uh, I wasn't a... That wasn't a breakfast. This is the yeah. Baal Shem Tov so, or the Rebbe? So you, you, you were in West Orange this morning? Not this morning, no. Oh. I was davening there, yeah. Anyway, oh. so, hi. So what happened in Yutet Kislev? In Yutet Kislev, um, there was the, the, the Alter Rebbe, the, the first uh, Chabad Rebbe was in jail. He was jailed um, because uh, he was um, helping to create, establish, uh, not establish, to support financially the uh, uh, people of Israel at the time, which were far and few in between, uh, he was collecting money. Uh, the Turks were uh, uh, <coughs> ruling the land of Israel at the time, and the Russians were in, at war with them. Uh, and so somebody snitched as if he's helping the, the Turks, and he was taken to jail. And uh, after 53 days, he was released. And the, the explanations that was given uh, at the time that, uh, and since, is that there was a kitrug, there was a, a, a persecution uh, over the release and revelation of the secrets of Hasidut. And um, in heaven, they didn't like, uh, the, there, were, there were voices that were saying that maybe that should not be, but after, uh, after 53 days, in jail, uh, uh, 53 days against the 53 chapters of the Tanya, of the Book of Tanya, he was released. And ever since then, we're celebrating this as the Rosh Hashanah for Hasidut. Now, Hasidut <coughs> is, is, um, is secrets, right? It's the secrets of Torah. Hello? And um, today, we're going to talk uh, a little bit about secrets <coughs> and uh, uh, as it relates to Megillah <coughs> We're going to start with uh, Rabbi Ovadia Mibartenura. <laughs> Rabbi Ovadia Mibartenura, as his name uh, suggests, comes from the city, was born in the city of Bartenura. Bartenura is where they make those they make wine. delicious wine. blue bottles, right? So, um, and some other bottles. Yep. Um, so, <laughs> So, uh, Rabbi Ovadim of Artenura uh, was uh, learned in, in that city and then became uh, the leader of several communities in Italy. And then he made Aliyah. He was, he was born in 1440, between 1440 and 1450, they're not sure. In, uh, after his wife died in uh, 1485 or so, he made Aliyah, moved to the land of Israel, and became the, the Rov of the city of Yerushalayim. In, in that, uh, and led it for uh, until his death at uh, 15, 15, 15, something like that. He's known, his uh, claim to fame is his Pirush and the Mishnayot. He did to the Mishnayas what Rashi did to the Gemore and to the, and the Chumash. He was the premier, after the Rambam, was the premier. Uh, commentary, commentator on the, on the Mishnayas and everybody since then is using it he was he started a new way of commentating of, 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 of explaining in his explanations he would bring in the Halakha usually you're not allowed to, to give a Psak for, Mish, for Mishnayas you have to go to Shulchan you have to, to, to go to the Gemara you have to go to other you know, later books that uh, concludes uh, <laughs> that conclude what uh, the halacha is. He brought the the conclusions into those uh, into the commenta uh, commentary on the Mishnahis, and it's uh, it became uh, something very very uh, 
useful and a, a whole new way of looking at uh, commenting on uh, Mishnahis and Gemara, etc. So that's his claim to fame. There was... Sorry, I was late, but what was his name? Rabbi Ovadia me Bartenura. Bartenura. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Rabbi Ovadia me Bartenura, a, a, a fact which, which is less known, also... The, he has really another uh, another commentary, uh, another book that he put out that was put out uh, many years after he passed he passed away, and that is commentary and Megillat Rut. There are other small p- bits and pieces of his work, but the two main works is the entire explanation the, the explanation for the entire Mishnahis uh, and the commentary on Megillat Rut. The commentary on Megillat Rut was done in a totally different way than the commentary on the Mishnahis. The Mishnahis he was trying to explain the simple, the pshat, what it means, you know, so every Tom, Dick, and Harry will, will understand. Here, in Megillat Rut, he explained it according to the Sod, to the secrets of Torah. It's a, it's a pirush al pi asod. Now what does it mean when we say pirush al pi asod? Imagine getting a, uh, an email telling you that your uh, uh, bearded uh, cousin uh, was uh, standing on the porch when uh, trying to throw uh, long cucumbers and uh, Mama was uh, while Mama was sitting and watching TV. Very innocent uh, email, you know. Very, very simple message. So that's all nice and dandy, and you know, you start imagining the the, the cousin and the cucumbers and the Mama and the TV, right? <laughs> but what if the sender is a spy that's sending a message to his, uh, you know, to his, uh, yeah, to. to to home base, and suddenly it becomes, oh, actually the Iranians, the bearded Iranians are throwing, uh, ready to, to fire long-range long, long range missiles while Mother Russia is sitting and not doing anything and letting them do it. You know, it's a whole, you read the same email, totally different explanation. This is a, a, an analogy to what a Pirush al Pisod means. Pirush al Pisod, you read, what it says, totally different explanation. Totally from left field, unless you're being told what the code words are, you have no way of understanding it. And so how is that different from Remes? Remes is, is different. We'll, we'll talk about it some. But Sod is basically something that you need to be told. If, you're not, if you don't know it, you're not going to know it until someone who knows it before you will tell you. So that is the Pirush of Rabbi Ovadia Mebartinua. Now, he has a very extensive Pirush on Megillat Rut. We, for six months, are learning Megillat Rut. We're close to the end of it. And uh, we didn't really mention him much. Maybe uh, half a sentence here or there. I took some, uh, some uh, hints of that. But for the most part, we were concentrating on the Pshat. We were concentrating on the We were concentrating on uh, other aspects. And I felt that uh, we'll do a disservice to ourselves if we're not going to uh, take at least one, one small section and sort of bring him in, uh, you know, in the forefront and understand this just to see what, what he said. So, so we're going to try to do it today, not for long, but just a, a small piece, and to try to explain uh, verses that we learned last time and the time before that Briefly, but al piyasod, according to the secrets of Rabbi Ovadim about the Noah. So we were talking. Uh, it's just just uh, there is a famous uh, explanation, uh, uh, secret al piyasod explanation of Megillat Esther, where the code word Hamelech, wherever it says Hamelech, doesn't mean Achashverosh, means God, King, you know, the King of the world. So. And all the other actors and all the other events also are code words, and it means a whole different thing. So what, what, what are the code words here? The code word for God here is Boaz. 
Boaz is actually playing the role of God. And we, are, we were talking about the fact that he's trying to redeem the land, the Nachala. He's trying to redeem the land and redeem the name of the dead, of the deceased, right? He's, that's, that's, that was his uh, mission. That's, that's where we're standing now, right now. He's trying to redeem, he's trying to marry Ruth, and he's trying to redeem. Uh, the word redeem is very sort of strange when you're talking about land and names. I mean, redeem, it's, it's, it's as if it's the, the name is in exile. So the code word redeem is really that we are in exile and we need to be redeemed. Now, night is also a cord, is, is the actual exile, and when Boaz, a.k.a. God, was with Ruth, a.k.a. the Jewish people, in, at night in a barn, they are in exile. Night represents exile. And God goes with us into exile. And over there at the barn, he promised her that he's going to redeem her. He's going to take care of her. So now comes out uh, this Ploini Almoni, the, the other, the closer relative, right, who was supposed to redeem first. His name was Tov, right? Tov represents the good deeds of Am Israel, or the good people of Am Israel who were really uh, working, uh, um, working uh, according to Torah and, and, and performing the mitzvot the proper way. And there is a whole discussion between God, Boaz, and the people of Israel of how you're going to be redeemed. Who's going to do the redemption? And the explanation is as follows. There are two ways to be redeemed. You can be redeemed based on merit. If you're acting like, you know, like you're supposed to, you're going to be redeemed. Or God is going to override the system. If we don't have enough merit and we're not supposed to be redeemed yet, God is going to override the system because he wants to spread the name of God, his name, all over the land. And for that purpose, he'll overlook some of our infractions. So the discussion between Boaz, God, and Am Israel is, who's going to redeem? Are you going to redeem based on your tov, based on your... Good, good deeds. So he said, yeah, I'll, I'll work on it. And then I said, yeah, but you have to realize that this was tried several times before and it, didn't, it was not the permanent solution. We had one exile and then we were redeemed from, from Egypt and it lasted a few hundred years and then we were thrown again to exile and again and again. Now we are in the third round and now the the redemption that will come is going to be complete and total redemption, permanent redemption. So he's saying, beware that the redemp- you need enough good deeds, enough merit in order to redeem yourself permanently. So then Tov is sta- uh, stepping back and says, no, 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 I won't be able to do it. I won't be able to do it because instead of redeeming, I'm going to actually destroy I'm going to destroy. What does it mean I'm going to destroy? So Rabbi Ovadim Bartanura is giving us the, the feeling of, of the time and explaining it as follows. Rabbi Ovadim Bartanura, as we said, lived uh, towards the end of the 1400s. It was um, sort of a darkish time in, the, uh, in our history because uh, we were thrown out of uh, Spain at the time. And we were, you know, before that there were pogroms all over in, in Europe. It was, not, it was not fun time for us. And that led uh, about 100, 150 years later to Shabtai Tzvi, the Bako, right? Everybody was looking for the redemption. Everybody was looking for Mashiach. It's a little different today. People, unfortunately, don't yearn so much for Mashiach because we have it good, you know? Life is, uh, you know, what else do you need? got iPhone X, you know, we're good. Um, so, but then it was really, really, so people were trying to find all of those, you know, things to hold on to. Now what happened is, it's, what happens uh, uh, 1300 years before that, at the time of the great revolt, 
the, the revolt, the revolution against the Romans. There was this uh, character that we all know, his name was Bar Kochva. Bar Kochva was the leader of the Jews during the revolt, and he was fighting against the Romans. And he, it was the revolt lasted uh, 60 years or so, on and off, on and off, the three rounds, and he was the last round. And people, some rabbis, believe that he is Mash Mashiach, that he is ready to redeem us. Uh, one of his, uh, you know, staunch supporters was uh, Rabbi Akiva. The Tana Rabbi Akiva believed in him and uh, promoted him and, and uh, made, you know, uh, was wanted to make sure that he has all the support, the rabbinical support to, to uh, redeem the Jewish people. But he wasn't Mashiach. He wasn't and he didn't work. He had the potential to be, but he, he didn't really... Uh, and what happened is because he tried and failed after two, three years of the revolution, it was total decimation of the, of the land, of the people. It was, it became, the situation was, became ten times worse. So a false start of a Mashiach is worse than don't start at all. So what Megillat Ruth is telling us, according to the secrets of Torah, is that, you know, don't, it's, it's hard to be, it's hard to do the job the right way, and if you, you're not sure, if you don't, if you, you, you can't do it all the way, don't start because it's going to cost much more trouble. Now, how did they know, just as an aside, how did they know that he really was not Mashiach, that he didn't, uh, he wasn't worthy of being Mashiach? So, they're one of the signs of a Mashiach is that they don't judge, a Mashiach will judge, it will be the Supreme Court justice and the only one that uh, judges all of us and give us all the, uh, uh, the rulings, um, he will not need to read evidence. He will not need to look at videos. He will smell. Morach Vadain, it's called. He will smell the situation. You know, if somebody uh, 200 years ago will tell you that... Uh, you just show me your blood and I'll tell you exactly what you have, what kind of a bug you have. You also, you, you know, you would think that he's nuts. But today that's common knowledge. The same thing with the smell. We think it's nuts. It cannot be. But when Mashiach comes, that's, that's how Mashiach will, be, will judge the people. And Bar Kochva, also known as Bar Kuziva, the, the son of the, of, of the, of the, of the lie, he was a, a false messiah. He was not. He was not really a messiah. Wasn't able to do it. And if you do, if you can't do it, you're not messiah. Anyway, so Rabbi Ovadia Mibar Tenura is is basically explaining that God defaulted to say, okay, if you're not going to redeem, I'm going to redeem. And when I redeem, then I'm going to be able to reestablish the name of the dead. What's the name of the dead? The name of God, because. During exile, who cares about God, really? You know, who, the, the, it's, we are few and far between the people who are really um, understanding or, or caring or thinking about, uh, uh, about you know, all this godliness and, 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 and lakut, spirituality. It's a material world, and uh, everybody is uh, more interested in materialism than, than uh, spirituality. Um, so, to resurrect that dead piece of ours, um, this is when God is going to bring Mashiach. Why am I saying it today? Because it's Yutas Kislev, because it's the Rosh Hashanah for the secrets of Torah, and uh, may God give us, uh, you know, the merit that He, I mean, we merit ourselves, we don't have. But when we, we merit that God is going to override the system soon enough, and we'll reveal all of that. And then when we read this, we will read the secrets straight. That, that will become the, the simplicity, you know, the simple explanation. The secret will become the simple explanation. Anyway, just in uh, memory of uh, Rabbi Ovadia about the Nura, that nobody really knows the, his, uh, his real uh, yard site, you know, let it be today. And uh, so, that's, so that's that. Now, let's go back to... 
reality. <laughs> and um, let's, uh, let's progress a little bit and see um, where, um, where we stand. So we are en route in Perek Daled, Pasuk Chet, um, a little, uh, just about half a, half a chapter to the end. Um, we're going to have, uh, in two or three weeks, as we'll see how far we get. We're going to do a siyum, God willing, and we're going to start the book of Shmuel, God willing. Next, uh, I'm, I'm giving bribes, so next, next uh, week, we're going to have a, uh, a jelly donut party here. So, wow. all of those... All of those who are watching live and you want a jelly donut, you know, you can come here and uh, <laughs> just show you, yeah, just show up for, for for the real jelly donut. You can't have taste sufganiot. Sufganiot, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't yeah. taste it through the eyes. Sufganiot, yeah. jelly donut, yes. sufganiot, right? Yeah. Yes. Anyway, so <laughs> so vayomer agoel leboaz kne lecha vayishlof nalo. So we spoke about the uh, the fact that he was trying that Boaz was setting up the whole. Uh, the whole system over there, he had the witnesses and the rabbis, the court was there, and all the nation, not all the nation, all the people of Bethlehem were standing around in the plaza in the center of Bethlehem, um, looking at the spectacle, looking at what's going on. He was the leader of the Jews, so when he would talk, people listened. And he got the agreement from the closer relative that he's not going to uh, redeem, he's not going to marry Ruth, he is not going to buy the land from Naomi, uh, and he cannot do only one of them because you need to keep the property together. You cannot just sell half a lot. That was the law, and uh, so he offered him. So go ahead, you you uh, you buy this trouble. So said uh, Mr. Ploni Almoni, and uh, and they perform the exchange, the sale, the transaction was cemented the way we, um, you know, with the, with the Kinyan Suda, with the, with the, with the shoe. Uh, some say it wasn't a shoe, it was a, 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 a glove. And they, they made the exchange and it became, it became his. So Boaz um, said to the elders, and all of the people who were standing there at the time, Edima Temayom, you are the witnesses today. What is the, why did he say today? Because to make sure that people don't think that the transaction started before, that he had some arrangement with Ruth before, with Naomi before, that, that something happened, nothing happened before. It's really everything that the entire transaction started and ended today in front of your eyes. It's all open. You know, he told, he gave all the information to all of the uh, uh, relevant uh, actors and they all made their decisions and this is it. So, you... Is that smart to appoint them as the entirety as they did? The what? That smart to appoint all the skin in and all of the arm as a din? Um, yeah, that's you're a very. Asking, you're asking for trouble. You're asking for trouble. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good question. Uh, it seems that here a din is being used as let it let it be known, rather than just a din that are witnesses that actually. That's the way I understood it, um, and so what is he asking them? to be witnesses for Kikaniti et kol asher le'elimelech ve et kol asher le'chilion u'machlon miyad nomi that I purchased everything that all of the property that used to belong to Elimelech and then the rest of it that was that used to belong to Kilion u'machlon apparently they had besides besides the, the property that Elimelech gave them when he passed away, they might have had other fields and other property that belonged to them uh, before. But they, when they passed away, Naomi, they didn't have children. So Naomi took, uh, took over. Um, so now the question is, in the really, uh, we're saying, we know that the kids, Machlon and Kilion, 
Machlon was the older one. Kilion was the younger one. Um, here, we're mentioning it the other way. Kilion and Machlon. We're mentioning it the other way. So, some, uh, it's, uh, so some say that they're mentioning it the other way because Kilion passed away first. So, the property that he had be, that belonged to him came to Naomi first. So the property from Elimelech came first because he passed away first. Second, died Kilion, and then died Machlon, and that's how Naomi received all, all, of, their, all of her uh, property that she owns right now. Um, now, another reason why he mentioned Hayom is because there is a law, there is a rule in contract law. The rule exists, I think, today as well in some, in some, uh, you know, in some systems. If you write a contract, but the date on the contract is incorrect, either post or, or pre, you, you post dated or predated, and you sign it, the contract, according to Jewish law, is totally nullified because it's fraud. It didn't happen today. You said. You know, it happened yesterday, so you should have signed it yesterday. Or you should write in a contract that it happened yesterday and you're signing it today. You have to tell the truth. So it was very important for him to sign it today and to make sure that everybody knows that it's today so they don't afterwards come and, you know, go to, the, to a higher court and, and say, you know, it's... Uh... Now, we're talking about a higher court. There was no such thing higher court. If you recall... What was one of the reasoning behind the refusal of Tov to redeem, to, to marry Ruth? Because the ruling that was taught at the time was that you're allowed to marry a Moabite. You're not allowed to marry a Moabite man, but you're allowed to marry a Moabite woman. And he was afraid that this is just a, some sort of a rabbi's trick. And the rabbis of the next generation will overturn that law, and therefore you'll get stuck. You will have kids from that woman, and you know. So it comes to tell us, Boaz said, that whatever the base din is doing today, nobody is going to reverse ever, because this is not the way it works. You can you can reverse rules, but you don't. Go you don't go and, and, and retroactively change the status of people. If a based in said that this marriage is okay, no based in ever you know will come and say, "Oh no, 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 that's not. that's actually not okay. So uh, that is uh, another, another ruling that we learn from this pasuk. Um, now um, one of the rules we said is that the, the, lot, the, the, the land cannot be divided. If you buy a lot, you buy the whole thing. Now, Elimelech, uh, Elimelech had um, his portion in the family treasure that his father gave him, belonged to him, right? And then he gave it to his children, some of it to his children. The other piece, so, so when Elimelech died, when Elimelech died and then the kids died, who are the rightful owners? The rightful owners are, there is something that goes to, the, to Naomi on account of her Ktuba, but the rest of it will be split amongst his brothers. So his brothers are Shalmon and Tov. Shalmon is the father of Boaz, and Tov is the Sploine Almoni guy, he's the, the third one. So Boaz basically arranged he said, I'm go Ploini Almoni is, is, uh, is giving up his right. My father, who passed away, Shalmon, I'm going to take his, I'm taking his piece. And Elimelech gave a nice piece to Naomi, and she agreed to sell me. So now I'm going to keep everything together, and all of the parties are satisfied, and, you know, there are no, there are no, no more questions about deeds and uh, titles and all of that. 
וגם את רות המואבייה, אשת מחלון, קניתי לי. And also, so this was one transaction. A second transaction was, he is, קניתי לי לאישה. I took her as a wife to, to marry her. Now, here we have a little bit of a problem because we said that Ruth is Eshet Machlon and we knew from before that she is the, the wife of Kilion. Right? So I think we mentioned a while back that she married first Kilion. Kilion died first, as we said. Then she married Machlon. And then Machlon died. And then she married Boaz and Boaz also died. Um, so... Nobody wants to marry her after that. After that, she's not really on the block, no. After you kill three husbands. Yeah. <laughs> so, now, he's, he, again, every word here is very, very exact. And he says he's marrying her for one purpose. Not because she's pretty, not because she's rich, not because he wants the money, not because... In order to perpetuate the name of the deceased on his land. And uh, if you learn Ilchot Yevamot, Yibum, there is a big disagreement over there. And uh, really, people are, are saying, many rabbis are saying that you cannot... Take marry the, the wife of the brother as as Yevama, as Yibum, unless the whole the sole meaning for it is to perpetuate the name of the of the deceased. If you do it for any other reason, you're not allowed to do it. It's it's a it's a sin to do it. Some go, you know that. Who, who establishes what the reason is? The reason is the, is in the Torah. No, no, but how are you going to know that he's so, not going to so, 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 you know... He was interrogated. So I don't know that anybody can interrogate what's yeah. deep in people's right. heart. And the basin, the basin can only see what they see. But the person knows, and God knows. So, you know, it's, it's, the, the point is that they should... It needs to be done the right way. Obviously, you know, I mean, you also can see motives. You know, if you took a... An insurance policy and all of that, and then suddenly, you know, there, there are ways to later on determine some of that. But it all comes back to the smell. It all comes back to the smell, exactly. Okay. And the smell of the truth, yeah. And um, the, the name of the deceased is not going to be cut off from his brothers, and is not going to be cut off from base din. This is uh, this is where we learn that another base din will never overturn it. Um, and you are again your witnesses to testify today. And this is the answer to to you, uh, uh, David. We're there and we're just answering, but the witnesses were actually just the elders, and there were 10 of them, okay? He set up 10 elders in order to do, uh, to have a base din, to do the proper marriage and to proper, you know, the transaction with the shoe um, for the land. So they were, um, they are the, 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 the witnesses. Some say that even the, that because he was the head of the Sanhedrin, because he was the head of the Sanhedrin, it was proper for the elders to be the witnesses. Otherwise, it's not, it's not, it's ain't fitting, you know? It's not nice to have a, a, one of the, the, the people that are more uh, respected in the community be just witnesses to a, a simple transaction. But here it was, you know, it was, a, it was a special person and a special event, so that was okay. And then they were all together blessing the couple, and from this we learn that in a, at a wedding you have to bless the couple. That's where Sheva Boch has come from. That's why when you come to a wedding you have to say Mazel Tov, you have to bless the Chatan and Kala. You know, sometimes there are some, uh, 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 some customs that during the Chupa, um, there is a Birkat Kohanim said to bench the, the, the Chasen Kale, and then People, you know, all the kahal is being invited to bless the Chosen Kale. It's uh, there. And, and I think uh, 
in uh, th- these psukim that we're reading now, according to the Yamanite custom, they re- repeat those psukim, they read those psukim in the chupa, under the chupa, as a blessing for the couple. Um, so what is the blessing? <laughs> that God will uh, bless, uh, will make this woman who comes into your house as like Rachel and Leah, that they both built the house of Israel, and then additional blessing, we'll go through all of them, we'll see what each one means, and then an additional a blessing and you should do uh, a lot of uh, you should be very successful in the in the city of Ephrat and a third blessing and, and your name is going to be uh, famous and going to be uh, held at high regard in Bethlehem now many questions here why Rachel and Leah who was the older one Leah, so why starting with Rachel? She was the more loved. She was, what? She was more beloved, but these, where are we right now? In Bethlehem. Oh, she's buried She's there. buried outside. That's the Jewish attraction in Bethlehem. In <laughs> Bethlehem is, is, the, is, the, is Kever Rachel, right? And where, where did she die? She died not, not far away from it. Bederech Ephrat. She passed away in Ephrat. So he's telling him as follows. May God bless you, Ruth, like Rachel and Leah. Rachel and Leah both came from an idol worshiper. And they left the home. And they, they tied their, their future with Yaakov. They left everything behind. The same thing as Ruth did. Rachel was especially... Um, rejecting the whole idea of, of idol worship. She was taking, she stole the idols from her father, if you recall, and hid them. And so the same thing as, as Ruth, who didn't have to steal anything, she didn't have anything at home, but she left the whole idol worship uh, idea behind her. And she can, so she, she should, that's why Rachel uh, was more uh, stronger in that point. And she is mentioned first. Um, interesting is that all of the people who lived over there, Bnei Yehuda and Bnei Binyamin, came from who? From Leah. But they had the respect to Rachel because she's buried there and because what she brought to Am Israel, and they stated her first, which is, it's awesome, you know? It's really, it's really special. And, uh, and Rachel was the pretty one, so they bless Ruth also that she's going to be uh, viewed as the pretty one in, in the eyes of her husband. Um, Leah was the productive one. She had many more children. So they're blessing her to also have, be able to build a, 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 big, uh, a big household. Um, and then they are... Um, Where is it? Um, uh, where is it? Um, can't find it. Anyway. And then it says, oh, Vasechail Be'efrat, in order to sort of tell him that um, let's overturn that bump in the road that Rachel had, that she passed away in Efrat, May the blessing that you'll get such that you will continue to live. Ruth actually lived to, uh, to be, um, uh, to, to see her great great grandchildren. She lived un- until the time of Shlomo Amelech, which is many generations later. So, this blessing of not, you know, uh, you see, after, after, you, after you're not married for a while, you know, you live for a long, you know, you live for a long time. But, uh, she, she was happy with that. And uh, there is something else that I'm, I keep looking, and I don't know, I lost here. Anyway. Ah, there is a, another thing, Chayil. Chayil is the gematria of Memchet, of, of 48. Right? 
48, if you count the, the children of Yaakov, as they, were, as they came to Egypt, there were 70 of them. Out of the 70, 48 are the kids of Rachel and Leah. So the rest are the, belongs to the, to the mates and Yaakov himself and, the, and Rachel Leah and, uh, and Bila and, uh, themselves. And, anyway, so, so that... Uh, How do you get to 48 of the children? Children and grandchildren. Children and grandchildren. Children and grandchildren. That, that's how they, they counted, yeah. Um, they're six and two, but they, Binyamin had ten children and, you know, and they counted also Yosef children, so, anyway. V'hi beitech kebet peretz asher yaldat amar li Yehuda min azera asher iten Hashem lecha min anahara azot. So, Peretz, who's Peretz? Peretz is, Peretz is the son of Yehuda and Tamar. There is a lot of uh, parallelism between uh, Tamar and Ruth. Tamar also was married to two husbands before, and they died, and she didn't have children from them. Same thing as Ruth. The third one brought the uh, brought, brought the children. Um, with uh, with uh, Ruth also, there was a uh, thinking that maybe Tov is going to be the one to redeem her, to marry her, and to uh, create the family. And then it was changed to Boaz. With Ruth, it was the same thing. There was, if you recall, when they gave, uh, when she gave birth, there was two brothers, Peretz and Zerach. Zerach. Zerach got his hand out first, and then Peretz, and, and he got his hand out, and the, uh, the, uh, the maid, the midwife, tied uh, uh, twice something on his wrist to make sure that you know who's the, fir who's, who's the first bo born. And then he, the hand was taken in, and Peretz came out. That's why his name was Peretz. Why are you, what are you pushing your way through? He was an Israeli, you know? Why, why are you pushing your way through without uh, standing in line? So that was Peretz. Initially, initially we thought maybe uh, Tov would be, and no, it was Boaz. The same thing. There is a lot of parallel, um, uh, you know, analogy uh, between, the, between the two. Now, um, when Tamar had her children, Peretz and Zerach, she was giving birth, Yehuda was away, and who called them, who gave them the names? The, the, the women that were the, around to, uh, to take care of her. And the same thing here with Ruth, because he, he died that night, I mean, the, the next morning he died, and um, she gave birth, she, she went through the entire pregnancy alone, and she gave birth to, uh, to her son, and, and the, the, the women that helped her, the midwives, uh, were the ones to, to give the name. And indeed, I mean, I know stories from, from, from our family that it used to be a common, it used to be common occurrence when, you know, the husband would not be available, and the the, the mother would be in the hospital and, uh, you know, she didn't make it out to the bris for the bris and uh, just the women, uh, the family, the, the aunts, the, you know, they, they decided the name, right? Um, so, Vaikach Boaz et Ruth Vatilo Leisha. So, Boaz, right away, without waiting, uh, marrying her right there and then. So right away, he is, um, he is performing the wedding according to the, the, the current law that we, that, like we do. We learn that, that a, a, a husband, a, a groom has to give the bride um, something that's worth money, right? The, the ring. If you if you you know you've been to a wedding, the rabbi is asking, is it how much is it worth? Is it worth more than a pruta? You know, it needs to be actual something worthwhile, worth worth money. So that's what 
and that you own it, right? So vayikach boaz. That's that's what we learn from from kicha. Vayikach and kicha ela bekesef, right? And then vatiilo um, leisha. That's the that's the chupa. After you do a read mekudeshetli, we do it in the chupa. So that's a, another uh, another step. And then vatiilo leish vayavo elia. That's the yichud. That they are together. He brought her into the house, and they were together, and uh, um, and all of that was done um, right there and then. And one of the things, the main things that we learn from it is that you cannot wait. When you need to do a mitzvah, you need to do it right, and you cannot wait, because had he waited in the morning, he was gone already. So it was really and. They're praising her. They were praising her before um, that she remained with him, and she didn't go after the young guys, even though he was really old. He was, uh, you know, super old at the time, 80 or more, more than 80. Um, and um, so um, now Herayon is Gimatria 271. 271 is nine months in a day. 270, 30 which, times 9. Which word? Herayon. Pregnancy. Pregnancy is gematria nine months. Right? 200. Why was she pregnant for nine months and a day? Exactly. To tell everybody that the boy is not from before. Not from some other affair that she had. It's from Boaz. And Vatelet ben Vaiten Hashem la ben. Only her because uh, Boaz was gone. And from here, I know the rabbi is here, I'm sorry. And from here we also learn that um, this whole pregnancy and in general pregnancy is from God. You can, uh, you can try to, to influence, but really it's all the hands of God. Anyway, we'll continue next time. Thank you.